Well, welcome, and I'm really excited about tonight because bone broth is something that I really geek out on. It's sort of um, a, <laughs> a food that is maybe becoming a little bit trendy, which I think is a good thing. Some food trends I'm not really into, but bone broth, um, there's a lot of science behind it. It's a healing food, and I'm really excited that um, people are wanting to learn more about it, and places like Hickory Nut Gap Farm are making a uh, bone broth that you can buy and feed yourselves with. So, um, what's that? Questions for breakfast. Perfect. So, um, so broth, which is made from animal bones, um, has been used throughout the ages um, as nourishment and for healing purposes. Um, we know it as a remedy for cold and flu, but it's really much more than that. Um, it's been historically used for connective tissue, um, GI tract issues, joints, skin health, lungs, muscles, um, to strengthen the blood, really for everything in your body. Um, it's used, still used more in cultures and in culinary traditions where the whole animal is used. And that's something that in this country we tend to not use the whole animal. We tend to throw away the parts that are really the great parts, the feet, the heads, and the backs, the knuckles, um, and just, you know, eat the breast and eat the thigh and eat the, the good parts. Um, so this is uh, just kind of a different habit to get into using the, the head to the tail of the animal. Um, a decrease in broth preparation sort of coincides with a decrease in um, cooking at home in general. And with when you look at like um, post World War II and the Industrial Food Revolution, everything became really easy, and there was box box soups and box broths, and people sort of stopped the tradition of doing uh, broths. So, um, can you click the next slide? Sorry, she's clicking my slides from back there, so that's why I'm I'm not being weird. Just. <laughs> um, so one of the big components of bone broth, the gelatin, um, has been seen as a nutrient-dense, inexpensive food. And it was particularly used um, traditionally by the French, who were seeking ways to feed their armies and feed vast numbers of homeless people in Paris and other cities. And this is just one example of a place where broth was used. Um, and I just like this example because a nurse, not a doctor, but Florence Nightingale um, was using the broth, broth in the 1800s to heal patients. Um, and a quote from her, beef tea may be chosen as an illustration of great nutrient power in sickness. There's a certain reparative quality in it, and it may be safely given in almost any inflammatory disease where much nourishment is required. Um, and like I said, it, broth is making a comeback as a nourishing uh, drink. Um, to, and a base for cooking and also just a standalone therapeutic food. This is a quick slide, just it's a picture of Florence Nightingale giving broth to um, patients. And what I love about it is just think about the ho a hospital right now. I'm sure you've all at some point had an experience in a hospital and you think about the food that they're giving you in the hospital and it's about as opposite as you can get from um, healing beef broth. <laughs> and just imagine, yeah, imagine a hospital where they came in the mornings and offered you some beef broth to help you heal instead of, you know, some pancakes with syrup or whatever they're feeding in the hospitals right now. So. That we can dream. Um, so there's stock broth and then bone broth. And those can all be s sort of similar, um, just a little differentiation. Um, as, you know, as you might note on the slides, I have a lot of information. So I may skip over some of this. But as I said in the, um, to some people in the beginning, I can email the PowerPoints out to you if you want to read through all the information. But basically, a stock is water simmered with vegetables, aromatics, animal bones. Um, it's usually cooked for about four to six hours, which is less than a bone broth would be. Um, and the goal of it is to take some of the collagen out, which we're going to talk later about what collagen does and the gelatin and whatnot. Um, and it's the, what it does is give stock its thick, gelatinous quality. So you want to cook it, the stock, to give it a little bit of that um, sort of jello texture. Um, when chilled, a uh, good stock, and I say good stock because we're going to talk later about Swanson's and some box stocks that don't, aren't good, um, it should gel and it should um, have the texture of jello. I hate to say jello in a nutrition lecture, but. Um, and this stock is typically used for sauces to deglaze a pan um, or for gravy, or you can use it, um, add water to it, and use it as you would use broth. 
Um, so broth, just kind of regular broth, is water simmered with vegetables. They all have stock broth and bone broth all have the base in common, which is water simmered with vegetables, aromatics, and meat, and, and can have some bones. Um, broth is typically cooked for a shorter period of time, like 45 minutes to two hours. Um, and the goal of the broth is to use the ingredients to create a flavorful liquid that you can drink on its own or use as a base. And of course, it is going to have some nutritional um, value and some protein and some good amino acids, um, but just not, it's not going to have the collagen and the gelatin like a broth would, like a bone broth would. Um, and a, a, just a broth usually stays fluid when chilled. So you could chill it and it would still be a total liquid. Um, and yeah, that's a little bit on the broth. So then we move to the bone broth. And so the bone broth is sort of a hybrid between the broth and the stock. And it's um, cooked for a long period of time. So you could, you know, there are gazillions of bone broth recipes out there. And they go anywhere from 24 to 72 hours to, day, you know, cook it for days on end. So it just sort of depends. But usually like a minimum of 24 hours would be really solid. Um, contains mostly bones. Um, and I'm... I'm not going to go through all the process of this because Nate's going to do a great demonstration later on how to make the bone broth, but just um, the idea of this one is that you're getting um, as many of the minerals and nutrients from the bones as possible. Um, and when you um, chill your bone broth, it should be um, gelatinous and the consistency of jello in the fridge. Um, so a couple of real quick cooking tips. Um, do you want me to do these or skip them so you can do them? Yeah, let's skip over that. Cooking tips, more to come later. Um, OK, more to come, quality of the bones. You'll have this written down for later if you want it, but Nate can talk about it in the kitchen. Um, some of the great uses for bone broth, I heard um, you say just a little while ago that you had some for breakfast. And I sort of feel when I said it was trendy earlier, I feel like there's sort of this movement to have bone broth and where you in, where you would have coffee in the mornings to have bone broth instead. And really, that's awesome because you're starting. Have it more like soup. You could also have it with your coffee. <laughs> yes, that's how I do it. Coffee, bone broth, that's fine. You know, and I'm not saying you have to go out coffee and have the bone broth, but um, to, uh, as a way to start start the day. And um, as a base for soups, you can. Br you can braise um, meats and veggies in it. It's delicious. Cook your lentils in it. Cook your grains in it. Basically, just keep it in the fridge as something to always cook things in and add. It's just a, like an instant added flavor to things. People will think you worked really hard and cooked them a delicious meal if you just make them some rice in bone broth. It's delicious. Um, and I, I wrote up here sports drink, and I'm going to talk about that a little bit later. But it's sort of the ultimate sports drink because it contains electrolytes, minerals, and not sugar and additives like the other sports drinks do. So, um, so I'm going to go through some specific nutrients in the bone broth. So like I said before, we think of it as like it's really healing for colds and the flu, but why? Um, the, basically, the bone broth affects every part of the body, from our gut to our brain to our muscles to our ligaments. Um, it's low in calories and very high in nutrients. Um, it contains amino acids, trace minerals, gelatin and collagen, and glucosamine and chondroitin. And if you're like, what is she talking about? Hold on, it's coming up. <laughs> um, so the gelatin in bone broth is um, really beneficial. I think sometimes we think of gelatin, we think of like Knox, the box of Knox Jello, you know, that, those kind of things. But um, gelatin is heals the mucosal lining of the digestive tract and really help, helps to aid in the digestion of all of our nutrients. Um, it fights infections, the broth does. The glucosamine in bone broth can stimulate the growth of new collagen, um, repair damaged joints, and reduce pain and inflammation. Um, and the collagen and gelatin in bone broth supports hair growth, skin elasticity, and helps to keep uh, hair and nails strong. Um, the magnesium and phosphorus, it's some example of the minerals in bone broth, um, help bones to form, grow, and repair. Um, 
bone broth is very high in anti-inflammatory amino acids, glycine and proline, and that those are what really help it to help to fight inflammation. I'm going to give you some more information on those amino acids in just a minute. Um, and the amino acid glycine, which is found in bone broth, is has been researched to be very calming, um, both to help with sleep and just calming the mind in general. Um, the great thing about homemade broth is it's cheap, saves you money. Um, it's really, and it, we're going to have a, a very trained, awesome chef make bone broth tonight, and that's great. And you can do it at home. It's easy to do. Um, so I just want to encourage people to do that. You, all you need is a crock pot or a stock pot. You can throw all the ingredients in, and you can go do other things while the broth is cooking. So that's really cool. Um, and it's so a lot of people are interested these days in what supplement should I take I do a lot of nutrition consultations and people want to know what's the supplement that's going to help reduce inflammation what's the supplement's going to help with whatever is ailing you and the great thing about broth is that you don't have to um, target specific nutrients it provides you with so many different minerals and nutrients um, and the all, all of these are going to be way better than something that you find in one pill that you can take, you know. Um, and slow cooking, so you, when you do your bone broth, you're going to cook it really slow at a low temperature, and that helps to preserve all of the nutrients. When they're making supplements, they tend to um, cook things on really high, and that actually damages a lot of the nutrients that are in the supplements. So. Um, so I'm going to go back to amino acids. So amino acids are the building block of proteins, really important in bone broth. Um, glycine, proline, glutamine, and arginine um, all have anti-inflammatory effects. And you don't really need to remember all of these. I just sort of geek out on talking about the different ones. But, you know, bottom line is the amino acids are very helpful. Um, the amino acids stimulate muscle protein synthesis. Um, they're essential for growth, maintenance, and repair of the skeletal mus muscle groups. Um, so the amino acid proline helps to make collagen, repairs cartilage. You're going to hear me talk about collagen and gelatin um, and cartilage a lot throughout this talk. Um, promotes skin elasticity and nail health and keeps um, our arteries from stiffening. Um, the amino acid glutamine, you may have heard of glutamine or L-glutamine as a digestive aid um, or, or soothing to the digestive tract. Um, it heals the gut. It helps with the growth of villi, uh, helpful with celiac disease, Crohn's disease, or colitis, um, and helps with cell proliferation and helps with general muscle building. So very soothing to the gut. Um, the amino acid arginine is um, well known for treatment of sepsis, which is whole body inflammation, which a lot of us are experiencing now. Um, it's sort of come to be thought of more as the root of a lot of our Western diseases is um, whole body inflammation. Um, supports kidney function, wound healing, and improves general heart health. Um, Glycine is uh, the simplest amino acid that we're going to talk about, but it's, re it's really important because it's used to make other amino acids. Um, it's necessary for digestive health. It produces glutathione, which is um, really, really important for blood sugar regulation. So if you're having blood sugar issues, um, drinking broth even before you have a meal would be really helpful. Um, it en enhances muscle repair and growth, and, it, and I already talked about the calming effect that it has. Um, okay, collagen. So that might be something that you, collagen or gelatin, something that you're familiar hearing about with bone broth. Um, it's the most important protein in, in our connective tissue um, and bones. And there's more collagen in your body than any other type of protein. So when you're having the collagen from an animal bones, you're getting the, the breakdown of the collagen from the animal bones is working to repair the collagen in your body. It's kind of cool. Um, it's found mostly in the odd bits and pieces and tougher cuts of beef. Um, they have a lot of connective tissue. Um, and these are parts of the animals that I talked about earlier that we tend to throw away and not use. And those parts of the animal would be really hard for you to just chew and digest and get the benefits of that, but that's why um, you get the benefits when it's cooked in a bone broth. Um, so cooking the collagen transforms it into gelatin. So earlier when I was talking about the broth turning in, gelatinous or turning into jello in the fridge, that's when you know that you've got the good collagen content. 
Um, and I, I know the, the broth that they have at Hickory Nut Gap is very gelatinous when I put it in my refrigerator. <laughs> um, uh, and so that's how we can get the most amino acids without just eating raw meat, you know, which is where you would get it. Um, so collagen is um, the sort of the glue that holds our body together. Um, it comes from the word cola, which is um, a Greek word for glue. Um, when we make broth, we turn skin, cartilage, tendons, and ligaments into rich um, gelatin, which is like liquid glue. If you can just kind of kind of picture that. Um, and the gelatin is the byproduct of the breakdown that occurs during cooking. Um, and collagen is really the secret to well cushioned joints in our body. Um, and there, I think this is really fascinating. There's 29 different types of collagen in animal tissues. I can't tell you what they all are, but that's, that's a lot. <laughs> um, so the, like I said before, the health of your, your joints really depends on the health of the collagen um, in your ligaments, tendons, and on your, um, the ends of your bones. Um, so bone broth is loaded with the, <laughs> I always laugh because I'm going to say this word wrong, but glycosaminoglycans. I said it right. thought I would get nervous and say it wrong. Um, at, which are called gags. And so the gags on you. Um, they're molecules that keep joints healthy. And the, the most common of these that exist in bone, bone broth and that you may have heard a lot of are glucosamine, chondroitin, and hydraulic acid hyaluronic acid, sorry. Um, and the, the gags that we get from bone broth are resistant to regular digestion, so they're um, absorbed in their intact form. Okay, so gelatin, this is a little bit right here what it should look like when I was talking about how the broth should look gelatinous. Um, gelatin is really good for healthy skin, hair, and nails, um, for arthritis relief, uh, cell protects the cells for blood sugar regulation, um, improves sleep, normalizes stomach acid, is supplementary, supplementary protein. And what I mean by that is collagen is not a complete protein, but it does help to break down other proteins, so it's very important. Um, and strengthens the gut lining. We talked about that a little bit before. Um, and bone broth is the original gelatin source. Now you'll see a lot of different, there's powder gelatin, and there's gelatin supplements, and there's you know, different companies kind of getting in on the gelatin um, craze, but really the, the best way to get it is through bone broth. Um, and I already talked about how it should be in the fridge, it turns jello. Um, so one other cool thing that gelatin does it, is it attracts digestive juices, so it aids in the digestion of minerals and nutrients um, so not only when the nutrients that are in the bone broth, but if you're eating grains, if you're eating um, gluten, if you're eating other protein, things that you may find that you sometimes have difficulty digesting when you have um, gelatin, the collagen from it may actually help with the digestion of those products. That's kind of cool. Um, so thinking about like food combining, people sometimes do that so they can have um, the proper digestion, but some of the collagen may help with not having to do food combining um, and can reduce the stress from other cooked foods. Okay, um, I'm going to skip this one because I have another slide similar to it. And I'm, somebody got to keep me on track on time. I'm good. Okay, so um, talking a little bit about cartilage. So you think about the cartilage in the animals and then you eat the cartilage and it repairs your cartilage. I, I like that image. I think it's really cool. Um, so the cartilage in bone broth can help treat degenerative joint diseases, um, especially uh, rheumatoid arthritis and other types of arthritis. And I think that's really an interesting way to think about treating inflammation and arthritis because that's so widespread um, in our society, just, you know. Um, and again, there's all kinds of pills and ways to deal with it, but this seems like a really, a really awesome way to think about it. Um, contains chondroitin sulfate and glucosamine, um, and those are commonly sold as supplements that reduce inflammation, arthritis, and joint pain. Yeah. Um, so cartilage acts as our shock absorbers and reduces the friction between the moving parts of our body. Um, it relies on water and amino acids to remain spongy and resilient. 
Um, the best way to preserve our cartilage is to get the right amount of glycine, proline, glutamine. These are the amino acids I've been talking about, chondroitin, sulfate, and other nutrients which are found in bone broth. Um, so broth and mental health. So I don't like to make a big distinction between physical and mental health because I think they're really, really connected. Um, and so, of course, if I think bone broth is going to help with physical health, I think it's going to help with mental health. Um, but in a, in a 2003 study by Malaysian researchers, the, um, the participants who took broth experienced reduced anxiety. They had them report for three months, um, one cup of bone broth daily, and it resulted in noticeable um, change in their uh, physical and emotional stability. Um, and so when you're thinking about this, it's not just how is the bone broth feeding your brain, it's that the, uh, our, it's nourishing our gut. And when you think of the gut as the second brain, really what we're looking at is feeding the gut in order to feed our brains. And that's, you know, we could go have a whole other lecture on that, but I think just thinking about the ways that you could use bone broth to help support your mental health is really um, interesting as well. Um, so how we feed the gut is how we feed the brain. Um, so I keep having pictures of the broth in mason jars, not just to be hip and cool, but it's a good way to store it and carry it around. Um, so I'm, I am a long distance runner and athlete, and I'm always looking for the, the next like sports strength, the thing that's going to help, you know. And I've actually started doing, um, drinking bone broth, like before and after. I do long runs, and it's made a huge difference in um, just my sort of athletic ability and my uh, knees and joints and just the pain I experience from putting myself through that torture. <laughs> um, and so when you think about um, like bone broth versus Gatorade, so Gatorade, what does it have in it? Sugar, okay. It's got some other things too, some nice dyes and some water. Um, and then it has some electrolytes, you know. Maybe they made it, maybe they didn't. So when you're looking at bone broth, you've got calcium, magnesium, potassium, you've got all your electrolytes, you've got your minerals, you've got your healthy fats, you've got your amino acids. Really, there is no better sports drink. So make that, put it in your water bottle, put it in your mason jar, take it with you, you know. Um, I think I'm going to make a lot of money off that somehow pretty soon. <laughs> okay. um, so dental health. Um, some of you may have heard of Weston Price. Um, he was a dentist who studied um, bone formation in traditional cultures, um, and he it is big in promoting bone broth as something that helps to remineralize mineralize teeth. Um, and this is just all the things that I've been talking about because of the presence of minerals, because of the soluble fats, A, D, E, K, um, and because the bio availability of the nutrients and how we're able to actually absorb them. Um, so I don't have a lot of time to go into it tonight, but if you have any interest in researching him, he did a lot of really interesting work on the nutrients and how they form from birth. Our nutrients form how our teeth are. So it's not just necessarily genetics. It's how our, our parents ate. I mean, that piece of it is, but it's how they took care of themselves and how the um, nutrients were passed on down to us and then how we continue to use nutrients throughout our lives to um, fight tooth decay and have healthy teeth. It's really interesting. Um, so digestive disorders. So we've talked a little bit about how the bone broth can help with digestion. Um, so in the 19th century, broth and gelatin were widely prescribed for people who could not digest food or um, had little strength to aid in the digestion. Now, I don't think you'll go to many doctor's offices at Integrate, if you will, <laughs> um, where they would think to offer something like that if you were having digestive issues. It would mostly be some kind of pill or something, you know, to help digestive enzymes, something like that. Um, the, and broth and gelatin were also prescribed for acid reflux and peptic ulcers um, because it modulated the, the stomach acid, basically. Um, so if you're having any kind of digestive issues, I highly recommend trying some bone broth. Um, like I said, before you eat a meal, um, just get in the habit of that and see if you see any differences. Um, that just says a happy colon is a healthy colon, right? Um, and so collagen is usually decreased in individuals with, di with digestive imbalances. Um, the amino acids in collagen build tissues that line the GI tract and colon, so that's how the, the collagen helps with the healthy digestive function. Um, 
So food is only useful if we have the, the nutrients and the ability to absorb it. So you can eat a salad all day for lunch, you can eat the healthiest meat, you can do everything under the sun. If you can't absorb those nutrients, it doesn't matter. So just thinking in terms of like when um, you're looking at the most bang for your buck, broth is really great because you'll be able to absorb those nutrients. Um, and increased mineral consumption in general will just improve your digestion and your gut health. Um, so leaky gut, I don't know how many of you are familiar with leaky gut, but basically what happens with leaky gut is you have undigested particles that go through your gut lining and then they're in your bloodstream and basically your body says, what is this? I, I need to attack it. And I don't care if you ate a Krispy Kreme donut or you ate carrots, your if it passes through the gut lining, your body sees it as a foreign invader, sees it as a bad thing. So collagen helps to um, repair that gut lining and help with the leaky gut per and the gut permeability. Um, so, yeah. Um, so also healthy gut bacteria. I feel like the microbiome and gut bacteria are also kind of a hot topic right now. And the um, minerals and nutrients in bone broth are really good for promoting healthy bacteria and helping with digestive um, aid in, in that way. Um, and the healthy gut bacteria will improve mood, raise metabolism, and aid in weight loss. Um, so glutamine, which is an amino acid, which I talked about earlier, that's in bone broth, has been known to reduce firmicutis, which is, um, you don't need to remember that, it's just a type, it reduces bad bacteria in the gut and can aid in weight loss. So, um, you know, everybody's always looking for the next quick weight loss thing. What can you do? Um, add bone broth to your diet. It's not that simple, I know, but it's fun to say that. Um, so detoxification. So our bodies are actually amazing. Um, people tend to get into this, I need to do this cleanse, and I need to not eat anything for a couple of days or do a juice cleanse or whatever. Um, but bone broth will help with um, just the general detoxification of the body because glycine, which is an amino acid that I talked about earlier, um, promotes the liver's ability to detoxify, just to remove toxins from the body. Um, and it helps the body use nutrients and use antioxidants, so it can help the body detoxify. Um, potassium and glycine are supportive for liver detoxification. I already said glycine, but also the potassium. Um, and glycine and glutamine in broth contribute to the liver's production of glutathione, which I talked about a little bit earlier, but it's needed to detoxify um, mercury and other heavy metals that may be in our systems that can disrupt the gut lining. Um, and, and again, just a virtual uh, vital nutrients um, in general are going to just aid in digestion. So, Inflammation. Um, glutamine specifically reduces gut inflammation. If you've ever, sometimes over the counter, people take L-glutamine to help with that. Um, I kind of put that inflammation uh, image up there because now, like I said earlier, inflammation is starting to be seen more as the root of a lot of diseases that we're experiencing. So cardiovascular disease, diabetes, neurological diseases, autoimmune diseases, arthritis, um, Alzheimer's, cancer, all these things are starting to be somewhat related back to inflammation. And so where is that inflammation starting? It's starting in the gut. Okay. Um, and I already talked about the I won't bore you with that again. Um, so bone formation, um, bone broth contains nutrients that are really essential for our bones. So if you have fragile bones, if you've broken a bone, um, it's really, really crucial. What's that? Osteoporosis, yeah, mm -hmm, absolutely. Um, so the calcium, the magnesium, all the nutrients we've talked about, vitamin D, potassium, zinc, copper, boron, all of those uh, micronutrients are going to be really important for bone, bone growth. Um, it's, it's interesting because what, when you think of calcium, when you grew up and you think of what is good for your bones, what do you think about? Milk. It does the body good. Have you ever seen bone broth that does the body good advertisement? No, but that would be good. Just had that idea. All the billboards changed to that. Um, so. Um, so I talked about this a little bit before. I, I don't need to go too much more into it. Just thinking about the supplements and all the money that you're paying for supplements. Um, Universal U, 
to think about how you could um, get more of those um, nutrients from, from bone broth. Um, and then I was just talking a little bit about the, um, the milk piece, but I feel like science, the science and medical field is, is starting to lean a little bit more towards not looking at just calcium, magnesium, and vitamin D as, as crucial for bone health, but also starting to look at um, minerals and collagen and seeing that as essential for bone health as well. And that's kind of exciting new cutting edge science. Um, so standing the test of time, I've talked a little bit about how cultures used to use bone broth. Um, so nutrition texts from the 20s and the 30s recommended mixing gelatin um, into infant formula to help bring the cow's milk closer to human's milk. And as we know, um, it's easier for humans to digest human milk than it is for humans to digest cow's milk. Um, but the collagen helps to sort of make that more digestible. Um, and so research over a 30-year period found that gelatin would improve the digestion of milk products um, by emulsifying the fat and stabilizing the, the casein in the milk. Uh, that's kind of cool. If you, do, if you do drink milk products and are attached to that, then the collagen might help to make that a more digestible product for you. What about store-bought broths? I don't know why that's uh, backwards, but it is. <laughs> anyway, they're backwards. Um, so the store-bought broths, I mean, I bought store-bought broths for years, and now when I taste them, I'm just like, eh, I don't, it doesn't even taste good to me. But um, there's a lot of additives to them, so if you're not a label reader, check out the store-bought broths. There's a laundry list of ingredients um, in them. Sometimes there's sugar in them. You don't need sugar in your bone broth. Um, and uh, chances are really, really good that they didn't um, uh, cook it slow, low for a long period of time to give you the nutritional benefits. So if you need to make a quick soup that tastes good for your friends, that's great. But if you're looking for the nutritional benefits of having beef broth as a drink or as a, um, as a therapeutic food, you're not going to get it in the box foods. Um, and they're also really expensive. A box of that, you know, at Earth Fair is $5. And then, as you're going to see later, to make the bone broth doesn't, isn't really going to cost you a lot at all. So, um, so I just added in here, there's, there are so many bone broth recipes, and Nate can probably talk to some, uh, to some other good ones. And these are just a few that I use um, that are online. And really, what I encourage you to do is there is no right or wrong way to do this. If you love turmeric, put turmeric in your bone broth and enjoy it for that quality. If you, you know, you like a certain herb and you like the way it tastes or you're looking for a certain um, therapeutic use of an herb, then put it in there by all means. You just kind of make it to how, how you like it. Um, yeah, so I'm going to not talk too much about that and let Nate, Nate take over. Um, and this is just references on there, so if you look at the PowerPoint later, you can see um, some good information. Um, some places that I do look, and I think if you get into this and you want to research more, is um, Nourishing Traditions is a great cookbook. Um, but this book called Deep Nutrition, if you want to nerd out on um, traditional cultures and, and real food um, and bone formation and brain health, um, it's a really, really awesome book. Super into it right now. Um, yeah, so thank you all for uh, joining me for that. Um, are there... <laughs> the difference between chicken bones and beef bones. Um, and I think that they have a similar nutritional value. Um, they have different flavor profiles. Um, the chicken bones, from what I know, have more cartilage. I think that's what I remember, more cartilage. And the, the, if you're looking for like bone marrow, more of the protein, amino acids, fat, then the bone marrow would be more in the beef bones. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know as much about the differences of them, but that's a great question. <laughs> Yeah, they're both great. And I mean, you can use fish bones, you can use chicken bones, you can use beef bones. Um, the most important thing is the quality of your bones. And that's actually a slide that I skipped over, but making sure that it's really cheap, but you don't want to go to Ingalls and get the bones that they're throwing out. I mean, unless they're throwing out good bones. You want to get um, grass-fed meat bones, um, organic chicken, as much as possible. I mean, you could probably get some benefits from still having like a natural product, but to, to maximize it, you really want to get a, a great quality.
Yeah, let me do you and then you and then you. Okay, with the chicken, I, I have a really hard time getting it to gel. Mm -hmm. And I did my beef broth until I started using some bones that I got here last week. Mm -hmm. and now I have, wow, really good gelatinous stuff. But with chicken, do you have to use the feet? You know, I, some books recommend that. You don't have to use the feet, but the feet are really awesome, have a lot of nutritional value and have a lot of the connective tissue. And it and, um, makes it gel, mm -hmm. evidently. Yeah. I don't know that that's the only way to make it gel. Do you know that, Nate? If the chicken feet, I know that will make it gel better. Yeah, that's a really that's a really good point. The 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 tip the wing tips and the feet and that will help it gel. But if you're if it's not gelling, one of the common mistakes is that you've got too much water to bone ratio. So you basically want to have the bones and then have the water covering the bones. Last year I got an instant pot, and mm -hmm. so I got a bread that I was okay to make it in my instant pot, which is a pressure cooker. Mm -hmm. What do you think about that? About doing it in the pressure cooker? Yeah. It makes like um, it tastes great and it gels wonderfully and I cook it for three hours in the pressure cooker. Yeah. So is that like bad? I mean I my nutrition wise. I don't I personally I mean, I've read a little bit about like Sally Fallon's view on that and she wrote nourishing traditions and she says that it's okay and so I'm kind of like that's probably okay. I don't personally use a pressure cooker. I'm kinda of, I'm I don't know that I'm against them, but it's just not something that I use. And like so I can make a batch of beef and a batch of chickens. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and I like that for efficiency, and I also like the slow and low um, yeah. method. But yeah, that's the thing. Whatever you're getting from it, you're getting more than not doing it. Right. But but and and the point of ideally, you would want your bones to crumble because you have when you see that you get a visual of that. That's all the minerals are in there. Like it'd be weird to use those bones again because they're the minerals are all leached out of them. Right. It's my opinion. Try it twice. Yeah, that's a good question. I think that, yeah, when you think of other cultures, I mean, some cultures eat dogs, yeah, you know. Uh, uh, people Indiana, eat. Yeah, they're going to, you know, oh my gosh, alligator hate, but you know. I know. I'm from there. They might use possum bone broth there. Oh, Who so knows? Is that okay? possum here Nutria. Or I mean, I, w I would think, and you, you may have some opinion on this, I would think anything that you would consume. So I know people here that actually do eat bear. It's not super common, but that eat bear or eat deer. Alligator is a thing that sort of started to be served places as an exotic food, you know. Um, so I would think that if the, the problem is you're looking at the quality of that of yeah. that animal, right? So if you've got a wild animal, you're probably okay. I don't know. I mean, maybe, maybe a bear. <laughs> yeah. Right. So that's the thing. So you want to be, yeah, that's the thing you want to be careful about. You, if you don't know where something came from, you don't know what it was fed, that I would worry about that, honestly. Um, yeah. You, had a question. you mentioned that heat breaks down the nutrients, mm -hmm. but freezing has come up a few times. Does freezing decrease the nutrient content at all? I mean, my understanding is freezing decreases a little bit okay. of the nutrient, but it also saves it. Yes. So it's you know sort of one of those things. Like awesome. yes, you're going to get more nutrients from it. The best nutrients are going to be when you have it right when you make it. Okay. Yes second best would be to freeze it. And one cool thing about bone broth you can do when it um, gets into the jello gelatinous form, you can freeze it in cubes like in the ice tray um, and then defrost it like that or freeze it in small baggies and so it's a really efficient way to store it if you can't just store big containers. How long can you keep it in the refrigerator if it's still not the nutrients in heaven? I'd say five to seven days. That's my general. That's I, that's what I keep it in. It seems fine. Yeah, and it helps with um, respiratory, like clearing the respiratory. Um, and it also supposedly helps to suppress the white blood cells, which can be part of when you're getting sick, you have an increase in the white blood cells. So, yeah. And I think just also the big thing for cold and flu is that when you're sick, you need as many nutrients as possible to heal. And a lot of times when people are sick, it's hard to get um, nutrients because a lot of times you don't feel like eating or people will be like well I feel sick I just feel like eating something simple like a piece of bread um, you know and then there aren't any nutrients for your body to do that um, getting rid of what's in your body and healing yourself you know. it doesn't interfere with what like your right well it 
It would depend on what your reasons for being vegetarian were. I mean, it, it, it interferes with being vegetarian in that it's from meat. So it would... But it's just the bones. It's just the bones. Meat. Yeah, it's just the bones. So if you are fine with that as a vegetarian, I think that it would have a lot of health benefits. If you're a very strict vegetarian, then chicken broth, beef broth, it comes from the bones of animals. So it's not, it wouldn't be listed under a vegetarian diet. And, and, and you're right that you're not actually eating the meat. So if you're um, okay with doing that, I think it would be really, really beneficial nutritionally. Yeah. And you know what else some people do is when the bones are um, in the state where they're completely broken down in the broth, you can blend those up and give them to your uh, dogs as dog food. Well, thank you all for your contributions. It sounds like you've all brought a lot to this and um, I like hearing everybody's suggestions and sharing. Um, maybe we're going to take a little break now. Well.